I got a request from a member of my Discord server asking that I make a video on box sizing in CSS. So here is the video. Box sizing is a fundamental part of CSS. In this video, I'll be helping you understand this concept and also understanding how the property works using examples. So let's say we have this simple example here. We have div parents with a div for the class of child. And for my styles, the body has this background and a flex center positioning. Then for the parents, we have a width and height of 200 pixels, a background color of gray a border of five pixels solid white and now we have this now let's say we for the child we have this style here where we have a width of 200 pixels height of 200 pixels which is the same thing as the parent and then the child has a background color of green you can see that the child fits in perfectly into the parent but now watch let's say we add a border five pixels solid green uh, solid red and a padding of 20 pixels to this element you can see that the child element now overflows from the parent but the child has a height of 200 pixels and width of 200 pixels the parent also has a width of 200 pixels and height of 200 pixels why does the child overflow this is where we get to understand box sizing now let me comment this part for now now if i open the dev tools and i check the size of child you can see that the size of child is 200 by 200 now let's say i add this border 5 pixels solid red and a padding of 20 pixels what do you notice with the child the width and height of the child is now 250 by 250 and the reason for that is 5 pixels from the border plus 20 pixels from the padding that is 25 pixels so 25 pixels is going to be added to the top of the child and the bottom of the child and 25 plus 25 is 50 and then 50 plus the height is 250 and the same thing for the width you have your border and your padding on the left border and padding of the right which makes up for 50 and 50 plus 200 becomes 250 and that's why we now have 250 by 250. So how does box sizing fit into all of this? By default, the value of box sizing for every element, or should I say for most elements, is content box. And what this means is that the width and height that you specify is for the content of the box, content of the element. But when you add things like border and paddings, that is going to add to the width and the height. The other value you can pass to box box sizing which is something you have probably come across is border box now when you use border box what you're telling css is i want my width to be 200 pixels and my height to be 200 pixels and when i use a border or i use a padding i don't want the border and the padding to add to the height or the width i want the border and the padding to be contained in the width and the height and let's come back here and refresh this now what you notice first off is that the child is now fitting perfectly in the parent that is because the border and the padding is no longer contributing and if we come back here and we highlight on child you can see child is now 200 by 200 because these values are no longer affecting it so even if i make the border 10 pixels and i make the padding for top right bottom left to be 30 pixels if i refresh the border increases yes but css ensures that these other attributes do not contribute to the width and the height and so the child is still going to be 200 by 200 when you're using border box it makes it easy for you to control your elements because specifying a width and height is not enough when you use border and padding you might begin to get some unexpected height or width of your elements with border box it makes makes it more controllable for you when you say I want the width and the height of this you get that width and height let's say I had another element here called this a class of um, something I'm running out of names so here we can say something a width of 100 VW which is the viewport width this is going to have a height of 20 pixels and it has a background color orange I knew this flex was going to cause some problems let me use a flex direction of column and I line items of center for this something let me give it imagine bottom of 20 pixels so you can see what i am talking about and let's say for this something we now have a padding right of 200 pixels now when i come here and i refresh you can see that i can scroll to the right because there is some extra element there can even make this more obvious by adding 500 pixels to the padding right and now look you can see that we have more of that even when we specified a width of 100 bw so what we can do here again is box sizing, not content box, but 
border box and now when we do this css will ensure that if i'm applying a border or a padding it is not going to contribute to the width or height of that element and now i'm trying to scroll but you can see that our page is not horizontally scrollable we are now sure that this something actually has a width of 100 vw so again this is the idea of box sizing if you're using content box it means your paddings and your borders can contribute to the dimensions of your element but if you are using border box all of those attributes would be contained inside your specified width and height and that is why you see people do this a lot they come here and they say asterisk which is select everything and then you have box sizing border box i do this for every of my css if i'm starting a new project i have to put this at the top because this will allow me to control the dimensions of all my elements in a better way i can take this away from something and i can also take this away from child it's going to apply to every Everything. and now when i say i want my width to be this my width will be that when i say i want my height to be something my height will be that external attributes like border and paddings would not contribute i hope this video helps you understand what box sizing is like i said it's a fundamental part of css so understanding it will really help your journey in css i have more videos on my channels where i explain different css fundamentals you'd find some of them currently on the screen you can check out any of them if you enjoyed this video please share with others give this video a like and subscribe for more amazing videos like this.